Today we talk Super Bowl, Walmart, diapers, Beyonce twins, Bowling Green, Kiki Palmer, Oprah, and more on today's Headlines with Headliners. So I realized something about this song. What did you realize? I realized the reason, because Nate keeps saying we don't have bars. Yeah. It's because the beat isn't a good beat to rap no, to. No, it's not. It's like a song beat. And mm-hmm. he, uh, Nate rhymes in that old school style. Yes, like, he does. That fits. Walking down the hall, <laughs> looking real cool. I had to go get Hollywood my backpack for school. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do that for to, all time, yeah. you know? Turn on Nate and me tonight. See, you can do that yeah, the whole time. If you just sing it through. Black Hollywood Live. And I'm sick. See? So I know the sound. Turn it. Headlines with headliners tonight. Go headlines. Hey, go headlines. Hey. <laughs> See, it's one of those. Yeah. That's why if we had some like, if we had a real beat, if we had a real beat, we might be able to, I, I might be able to chime in a little bit. Maybe next next time Nate's here, we'll have at the, the last two minutes of the show, we'll drop some. Like a real beat. Like, like he, a real heat. beat. There some, we go. Because that's heat. I feel like we need to do that. Nate is absent. Yes, he is. More shows. Comedy. More shows. He's life. doing comedy shows. And then I had an amazing show last night. Really? Yes. Well, today is your birthday. It is hey, my birthday. Happy birthday, T. Thank so you, so you so did much. your birthday show last night. I did my night. birthday show. It was crowded. Everyone who couldn't get in, I'm so sorry. Sorry, guys. It was just craziness. People thought Caduce, Caduce, who's uh, one of yes. the producers of Chocolate Sundays there, came by. Uh-huh. And he was like, bruh, I thought this was South Beach, Miami, <laughs> One Oak, Hyde, everything put together. Yes. People were screaming, trying to get in. It was like it's hella beautiful girls. Oh, yeah. I seen they some of the video. I was like, hey. Yeah. yeah it, it was a good look. That's good. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling way better than you are. Oh, my I heard gosh. you almost died in Mexico. Again. I did. Again. Um, as everybody know, I did a weekend at Cabo and Puerto Vallera. So right now, I am I think I have, like, Mexican bird flu one. Um, so we got on the jet skis, and we are in shark water, and we went out very far, and the jet skis flipped over, and it was me and my... No, no, my, no. The jet ski, and that's not what I heard. I heard an engine flip over you found the drunkest dude you could decided to let this drunk person drive the jet ski yeah i didn't know you couldn't drink and drive on jet skis by the way we had been drinking 151 after i fell asleep i am sunburned to death by the way um um yeah we were we were we drank a lot um i didn't know you couldn't drink and drive on the jet jet skis so we flip off and at first we're trying to flip it over and like he's straddling the upside down jet skis and and is trying to flip it now earlier the current snatched me and cut up my leg so the current is really strong out there the undercurrent um and we couldn't get it to flip over so we're like all right let's hold on to each side of it and try to swim and then we just panic set in because we just keep getting pulled further and further out in my mind i want to take my life jacket off and swim back because i'm a strong swimmer but i know that er undercurrent would take me so then we we just looked at each other like this is it this we don't have anything else left to do everybody on the the beach looked like little ants and all of a sudden we just start going hell hell and i mean we're like crying and, and panicking so this banana boat comes by and tries to snatch him up and then the the another ski guy comes out there and so he jumps on and i'm still holding on they're like no we can only rescue one of you guys at a time it's like hey ain't nobody leaving me out here so Hilarious. i won't let go of the side i'm like i'm not leaving he was like okay you get on first and they can come back and get me so they flip the other one over but once you flip the jet skis over you can't drive it anymore so my knee is messed up you need a lot of power to be in the middle of the ocean and jump up on a jet ski I start crying because we could not, like, I, my leg would not bend. So finally, I was like, I don't care. Just break my damn leg. And so you just hear him go to get it on. But it broke up a lot of scar tissue that I needed broke up over the past two oh, years. Oh, wow. Um, and we get on there, and I look back, and he's just patiently waiting to be rescued. And it was cold. And not only that, we missed the van. So we're like, fine, we'll just take a cab back. We had to keep getting out of cabs. Nobody knew where we were going, and the boat was getting ready to leave. I mean, as we're running up, they're closing the thing. So we almost got left. I was out of cash. He was out of cash. My my bank stopped my card and he didn't have no ID and we were getting ready to be stuck with nothing in Port Vallarta. So in true Kanisha fashion, uh, that's what happened. And there's a bunch of topless pictures of me in Cabo floating around that I would like everybody to turn in, please, and stop posting the videos. So <laughs> it was my birthday. <laughs> um, oh, last man. night after my birthday party, uh-huh. I actually went home and I slept. So really? Very similar experience as you and yes. I have. Very similar. I didn't almost die at your birthday. Slept. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I slept. Of course your- not. My your life every day. I've listen. <laughs> I've never had a Kanisha conversation. It was just like, 
What'd you do last night? Remember, this is a lady who owns a Prius, by the way. <laughs> That, that's the most that's the most deceiving vehicle for you to have, by the way. Oh, is it now? Because a Prius. It's like, oh, Kanisha, look at her. She teaches kids. I do. I used she, to. She teaches kids. Wholesome. She's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay? Every day. I'm like, Kanisha, where are you at? Oh, I'm being held hostage. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm in I'm I'm in Senegal. It's not funny. <laughs> I'm being, I guess they kidnapped me to make me a sex slave. And that like, almost happened the last time me and my sisters went to Mexico. See what I mean? It did. See it, what it, I mean? You can see the video on our thing. And she told them. I She's like, I'm not going to be going a to Mexico. Good. <laughs> I know. Uh, Mexico. And nothing good it, happens for you in Mexico. It does not. It you never. love it, though. You love it. Or it wouldn't keep happening. You love it. You have a problem. Well, I, I like excitement. And I alcohol guess. is not for everybody. Sometimes you just got to <laughs> leave that bottle alone. Whoa, alcohol is for me. Yeah, because everything you've never done this is for maybe because you get into these situations sober. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> but let's go into story number one. Story yes. number one, the world watched oh. this happen. And the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history, Super Bowl 51 ended with the Patriots coming back from a 25 point deficit to beat the Atlanta Falcons 34 to 28. <sighs> After tying the game in regulation, at one point it was twenty-eight to three. Let me tell you something. First of all, everybody was saying this is like Black Lives Matters versus 100%. the Republican Party. A lot Party. of people were like, feeling that. That's how it A was. A lot like, of people feeling that. It was like watching the election all over again. You know what I'm saying? Like you just knew Hillary had it, and at those last moments, you're going, "This is not happening." And it right did. Now. It did. And Tom Brady also won the MVP in the first Super Bowl to ever go into overtime. Yes. So it went into overtime. They won. Um, can I say that that last uh, touchdown was fraudulent? Am I allowed to say? If you look at the freeze frame of that, his knee was down before the ball was not even, it didn't cross the line. Here goes the line, here goes the ball, and his knees was down. This he is exactly what it looked like. He caught the ball across the line. So I, I, I've seen the footage. Everyone's trying that. to say about the, that's if you look at it half a second after he catches the ball. He catches the ball, and he just, he it literally, he just, his, not even, his, his, Wrists basically cross the line. Like it's not that. Si it's not. It's uh, not that serious. I don't know. Do they win? Yeah, they won. I just want to know what that halftime speech was because I definitely need to tell myself that every damn day, they whatever that halftime. Any given Sunday. They had to. They why and, and you know what? Rich white America won again. Yes. Uh, like Trump wasn't enough. You know they were not gonna let this go. This was the gayest, blackest city in America. Yes. And it was about to win. There was a time. In the third quarter, that Matt Ryan could have tweeted, "Niggas, we got this." Yes, <laughs> and everybody would have retweeted that and been like, "Yes, nigga, we do." <laughs> yes, like yes. there was a time where Matt Ryan was he was he was Michael Vick. Yes, you understand? Yes, and then the Patriots came back. Now, all fairness, I knew the Patriots were going to win. I, I could say that. I knew the Patriots were going to win. Was I worried? Not because I wanted them to win or not, but I really feel like Tom Brady and his team is just a winning team. We made this a racial thing. We made this a political thing. It's not. It's a game of two teams. It is a game of two teams, but I feel like in professional sports, a lot of things are rigged, uh, especially when we lost to the Patriots. Uh, when we had a, we were on the one-yard line with a two-timeout, beast mode, and uh, two freaking um, timeouts to go. So I know exactly how they feel, but I do feel like it was kind of rigged. I That's just me. And if you watch the second half of the game, even the defense on Atlanta Falcons, they were not pressing the way they were in the beginning. They just kind of fell back to me. So I was just like, eh, I don't know if somebody made a call or what, but I just... To me, a lot of sports situations are rigged, just like the same thing with the Golden State Warriors. Like, come on now, really? Here's the thing. As a person who actually, you know, I played sports. Yes. And you've also done sports. Yes. It's very difficult to actually rig a game. Yeah. Unless you are the person rigging it, meaning in a team. Yes. So it's happened in basketball where the team, a couple of the players are getting paid to uh, shave points. Yes. But you can't shave points. You can shave points to lose. But you can't shave points to win. Yes. So right? that's what I'm saying. I feel like the... So it's like, yo, we're supposed to win by seven. We, yes. We win only by six. Yes. And we just start missing and stuff. But here's the thing with that. It's a lot of fluke. What happens is, and as you play sports, especially in a fast-paced sport like basketball, when you go up, and this just happened to us in our league team on mm -hmm. Saturday, we were up 12 points four minutes ago. Yeah. And we lost. We lost because... As a team, something kicked in where we were playing not to lose instead of playing to win. Okay. And that happens. Yes. And it's unfortunate. So you think you've got this, 
and you don't. I've that seen that happened. Happen. That happened to the Seahawks. Now that's not the C. I don't care what anybody says. The Seahawks was rigged. You cannot tell me that the the whole situation. They did not want Beast Mode to be MVP. A and the way they, he didn't even leave no second. He threw that pass straight in that interception. He threw that to him. I, that was I that know was, that seems like that. No, there was this is no way. this is what you're this is no. what you're 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 saying that the players on the field. Yes. The players on the field yes. were in on it. Yes, Russell Wilson, and, yes, I do and, believe that. And I, I, I do believe they made that person, call and was like, you have to do this. As a person. Just like they told Atlanta to stand down on their defense on the second half. Something. As a person who does something, you know, even if, even if the coach tells the defense to stand down, that defense wants to win, right? You do agree to that. I do agree to that. So they're going to play... As hard as they can. Not when they're when I don't know the details. And I just don't believe it. It's like, hard for me to. But it's but very of hard for me to believe it. It's hard for people to believe things are not a conspiracy because it's hard for us to believe. Because so much stuff is the greatness conspiracy. or failures of others. <laughs> but there aren't really that many conspiracies. There are things that make sense. Yeah. And there are things that don't make sense. The Patriots winning doesn't specifically help or not help the NFL. It comes down to money. Yeah. It comes down to money. So the Patriots winning, it's not like people are like, oh, well, now white America is proud. <laughs> the, you know, there are a lot of people who are not white who like the Patriots. Yeah. It's just we made it something that it's not. We made it a political thing. Oh, I just don't like the Patriots. I don't care if he was purple Why? with orange Why spots. Why do you not like Because I don't like what they did to us in the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> and and so that's a I fair reason. The, I hate I, I understand that. Okay. And not only that, the only reason why they were playing us in the Super Bowl is because of the whole deflate thing with the balls. So I just don't trust Tom Brady. And I think it's pretty cool that he was the most underrated, you know, in the last pick. Sixth and he, You, you, you know what I'm saying? And he came back and did all these wonderful things. But I also feel like he's a cheater. So I, you know. He has sure. heart, but he also because feels like of the he's a cheater. Gate, which I don't it was another thing where a lot of people didn't get all the information because nobody's looking at Peyton Manning like he's a cheater. And oh, I'm not has, a fan of Peyton Manning either. Peyton That's why Manning we had been them. caught several times yeah. in the exact same way. In fact, the Patriots and the Broncos are the two teams that called for that ruling. Now, why did no other quarterback step up and talk about Tom Brady? Now, here's the thing, and a quarterback who did give an interview said this. He and he said this anonymously. He said. The reason why none of us are condemning Tom Brady is because we all do this. So we're not mad at him. Yeah, it's us that are mad. It's the it's the fans who hear a piece of information. That's why when a little bit of knowledge is a very dangerous thing. Yes. We hear a little piece of knowledge and we're like, whoa, this, this, this. Yeah. They're not saying that a deflated ball is this much more likely. that He still had to throw that ball. Yeah. Someone still had to catch that ball. What they're saying is you're not supposed to do this and this is why you're getting in trouble. It's not... It, they get people get fined for not wearing the right color cleats. Yeah, it's not like if you wear the wrong color cleats, you run faster and this. It's a standard. But they a ball a is easier to catch when it's a little less deflated, and so. Sure, everyone everyone had the same football at that point. At that point, yeah, they they were throwing the same football that Tom Brady's throwing. So the problem is this: it's a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Now I'm not saying that Tom Brady did or did not cheat. That's not my concern. What I'm saying is we discount a lot of times we discount hard work. Yes. By just saying, man, he's lucky or man, they, they're cheating or man, they, they set him up. And I see that happening, especially in our world. Oh, yes. Where you see a comedian, someone like a Kevin Hart. And he's like, man, they just like Kevin because he's this, this, and this. Or he's sold out. No one can just say, we have to say, oh, that guy's, he's gay. He slept with yeah. someone. Oh, that, everybody there. loves to say that in entertainment. Exactly. And it's not like, I, I don't know if this person's gay or not, but I know for a fact, no one's trying to sleep with me to get somewhere. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm offered at this point. I'm like, hey, Steven The crazy Spielberg, part is, it does Steven, happen. I'll, no, Steven? people have Hi. offered me to sleep with them to go on certain tours, and I've turned it down. So really? That, yes. So you don't think that's really going to happen to you sitting there going? <gasps> well, I could imagine you, that I'm happening a, more to a girl. Yeah. But we, uh, yeah. But we love to say, even especially when the girls make it, we love saying, "Oh, she slept." with Oh everybody. my God! First of all, I, she slept got, with everybody. Oh yeah. Uh, Alcohol you know industry what? House. <laughs> Something about Viola Davis lets me think that she didn't sleep with anybody to make <laughs> and it. She's like, phenomenal. She's just really yes. good. I feel like. You know, Taraji is just very good. Yes. I don't know if she slept with someone or not. I don't know. But even if she did, it's not. She still she's is still a hard very worker. Good. She's very good. I don't at what she know. Does. And I don't discount people's hard work, you know. And so, yeah, I joke around. I'm like, oh, no one's offering me. But I just see people 
it's it's like the luckiest people are also happen to be the people who work the hardest. And then we discredit. Okay, and then I we discredit like, oh, Drake, oh, well, he was already on Degrassi. Yeah, you, Degrassi is a whole cast of people. <laughs> it is a whole cast of people. He was wheelchair Jimmy, and then there were yes. other characters who you've never heard of again. So what did he do? And I'm not saying he, there's no advantage point. But what I'm saying is advantage plus hard work equals success. Okay, well then I Not just take advantage that. by itself. Here goes another reason I don't like Tom then, because he has a Make America Great Again hat in his locker. I'm going to come up with every reason in the sure. world. Sure. And, and you know, <laughs> but because I don't and like this him. is America, and this is my thing. Everyone has the right to Freedom have a political, of speech and they, have a yeah, political view, they do. and I don't care. Honestly, if I could have got a great Make America Great Again hat, yo, those things look popping. Like, I, they are popping hats. I really want one. Like, I really would I like see, one. I see, it's a red hat. You exactly. Like red. It's red hat is popping. My thing is, I'll we, we love to dislike someone. Atlanta lost that game. And I wish they wouldn't have. It they lost been, that oh game. Oh, God, I wish they, they wouldn't And they couldn't have. score. Like, okay, They didn't sure. score after halftime. We let Tom Brady score, but it's not like Matt Ryan and his offense scored, and then they let Tom yeah, Brady score. Yeah, and none of that is suspicious to you? Not That's score. just so suspicious to me. It's not. It's not to me because I played uh, I play a sport I mean, I know how that could happen, but I just feel like it's the like ultimate game. Up, and then all of a sudden, you're down. So... Even with Golden State, I understand the conspiracy making it go to the last game. But that last game, LeBron just won. Like, that's how it goes. I can understand making more ratings. Yeah. Sure, let Tom Brady score two touchdowns. Yeah. Don't make it as far a gap. But winning? No. No, that win lose. Maybe they didn't. They, maybe they let it get closer. The crazy part is, I'm sitting there going the whole first half. I just want a more exciting game. This is so boring. It's just a blowout. And then that second half messed me up. It was a real. <laughs> that, it's like somebody told the Patriots they're playing. Man. People, and you know what the thing is? The funny thing is, every year the Patriots get here, and everyone in the beginning of the season, everyone's like, oh, they'll never do it again. Oh, this one. And they do it again. And they do it every every year. You know what's so crazy? It's like, it was almost like a Disney movie. Every Disney movie, every sports movie, the team is ha is down. Like, they haven't scored and then something happens at halftime. Mighty Ducks, all these things. So, quack! Quack! Where Belichick went in there things? and gave a speech. Yes, everything happened. Yeah, gave a real speech. And then they just come back out and you're just like, yeah. But in this case, you know, not a lot of people were going, yeah. But it, it was just like a Disney special. Like, what is that? No, there yet? were a lot of people going, yeah. It just wasn't in our parts of the neighborhood. You know, that's it, true. It I was, was at a, very... a lot of people like, whoa, Tom. That's and true. that's the thing is we as people made it racist. But sports is supposed to be pure. Yes, it is. It's supposed to be pure. It's now, supposed to be. But, I mean, you see what they did to, to Cam Newton for being a black quarterback. And I mean, they ripped him to shreds. People did. You know what I'm saying? People, people did. Uh, some but of the, the sport didn't. Yeah, the sport the didn't. Sport sports didn't. should be pure. And, and here's it brings the thing people about together. It. And people were like. People were like Cam Newton, perfect example. They were like, oh, the refs picked on Cam. They didn't pick on Cam Newton. They picked on a new quarterback. If Cam Newton, had, now this year, he had a lot more calls going his way. Why? Because now the refs have that reputation uh, and rapport with him. Yeah. The same thing happened with Jordan. If you notice, they definitely gave Jordan a lot of, you know, passes because he's Michael Jordan. Yeah. The refs can be fangirls too. Yes. So... Once they become a fan of this person, they do the same. And, it, and honestly, the one thing I've noticed is that in the actual sport, that's when racism isn't really as strong or prevalent as it is Yeah, because even some of the racist people in the world will cheer for a team that's half black players. That half black, half, and it's like on the field, only your talent and hard work is all that matters. I mean, it does break down doors and barriers and stuff it like does. that. But I Sports <sighs> is what broke down the se desegregation barrier. Yeah. Like, well, they were integrating sports because at some point you just could not, could not refute the talent yeah. of black players. Yeah. Where some of the least racist people were those same racist coaches and racist yeah. players who were like, you know, all these movies, the Remember the Titans. Oh, my gosh. That is my movie. That oh, Remember the yes. Titans moment where mm. you're just like, we've come together yes, as human strong beings. Strong side. Exactly. <laughs> strong <laughs> side. Exactly. That's I get goosebumps yes. still there. It's like, strong side. Oh, like, my God. Especially that's near where I grew up. T.C. Yes. Williams is a school that's in a district where I, we very familiar with T.C. Yeah. Williams is not 15 minutes away from where I grew up. So that's a real thing. I feel like. The purity of the sport exists now. Do I still think it's entertainment? Yes. Yeah. Is it supposed to be for ratings? Yes. Do I think that there are things that happen in order to increase that ratings? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. But do I think ultimately at the end of the day, the United States wins more gold medals because of the conspiracy? No, I think the United States athletes are just in a ranger-wide variety of talent, and yeah. they 
win gold in sports like we win basketball where else do they play basketball as much as we do i know you know so do we're we gonna win ask in, this? in soccer though exactly Everybody else plays everyone soccer. If, there's, if there's a conspiracy then there would have been uh, trust me america would have bought its way into that when they were yeah. trying to bring soccer to the united states that heavy that's nobody was really messing with it nobody can i point something else out yes the, my favorite meme of the super bowl was when they showed the bushes the oil and was like oh we can't make it <laughs> trump trump <laughs> they were like trump uh, hey, you coming to the? Hey, coming W, to the, you coming to the to, <laughs> to the, the inauguration? inauguration? It's like, oh, my deathbed. It was him and his wife. They <laughs> they look deadly, and then you see them at the, the Super Bowl, like turning, turning up. all the way up. I was like, this is the highest the level of petty. Two weeks petty. later, <laughs> hilarious. That was actually. Oh, hilarious. Man. Did you watch the commercials? I only got to see the, there was a commercial that I really did not like and Which I was one? not happy with. I didn't like how they feminized Mr. Clean. I just didn't like. Oh, it. they made it all sexy. Yeah, and he just was he was he was just feminine to me, and he didn't it was moving his hips and doing. Something. I just don't like. I just didn't like it, Mr. Clean. I just didn't like it. So that's. But they it. were showing a guy cleaning instead of a girl, and then it was saying, "Hey, if guys clean, then it's sexy." Yeah, I still didn't. I just didn't like the Mr. Clean being feminine. I don't care. I, I like, didn't like it. I like the uh, Audi commercial with the girl, the young girl. It's a young girl, and her dad's like my basically my daughter can be in anything she wants to be when she grows up oh i didn't see i was like that. wow that was great dang i gotta go look at that one and then the funniest commercial i saw was the martha stewart snoop dogg commercial oh my goodness they that was are hilarious. have you ever watched their show they are absolutely hilarious, hilarious. together and he, yes. he was like what, what are you thinking he's like uh purple cushion <laughs> <laughs> yo, it's so good it was like can of bisque <laughs> like yo they, that was a funny one i like so that one. good it and i like so the good. babies when they made it the nfl babies no, the NFL, that was well cute. that was cute that was that cute. was cute they did it and what about lady gaga how'd you think you know i feel like that she's somebody who works hard i'm just not i guess if you're a lady gaga fan then you would have appreciated i just wasn't a fan and it was kind of boring and i like when they include more than one performer i feel like it just needed something else No, they were scared this year this year was scared First of all, she wore an outfit, so there would not be a nip slip oh at my all. Gosh, like, not tape. even close. Yeah. Even though I thought it was really ridiculous that so many people attacked. First of all, she's a very thin young lady. And no, no, she had, she had a little. little pe- there was a point. There was and, a point where she had that little fat. And I was like, are we gonna act like she didn't just have this little? I pouch? know, but I feel like I. They, 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 oh my God! It's just the it, attack it, of the killer bees with that one. It was just a horrible angle and the way it went. It looked, and that's all. It and she's so over. still a white girl. Is paper thin. So she is. And and it was just funny that that angle. We're gonna act like that didn't happen. That's funny. But I just, I didn't like the performance. I thought it was very cool that she, you know, jumped down and flew. I just didn't, I was you not a fan like of it. No, like but that. it just wasn't exciting. Like, I, all the dancers and all the, but it just didn't grab me. You know what I'm saying? And then we're coming off of Beyonce, Black Power, Bruno Mars. When you have so many more people and you get excited, you're like, yeah. They so. found the blackest performer that they could that <laughs> America would accept right now. Yes. And it was Lady Gaga. Yes, they were not going to put Tom Lowe. I mean, she started off with the remix of the National anthem pledge of allegiance like is she did every patriotic thing that you, that could, you could do and a lot of people were disappointed that she didn't use her platform with so much going on to at least address something and i mean i know they put a lot of pressure on entertainers but that's also like what we're living in right now we can't just ignore these things are going on true but at the same time it's a paycheck and if somebody yeah. pays you to paint a wall brown you paint it brown well, even Beyonce if you can came make the, up best, the, the x and the black Panthers and they and got the, rid of that and, yeah, they, they and that was that was my favorite moment the determining moment where people actually turned off their TVs and only watched the Super Bowl via ESPN.com or whatever. <laughs> so they were like, this is a TV show. Yeah, I just... This I, wasn't her freedom of expression yeah. to her own accord. This wasn't the Lady Gaga show. This was the NFL. This was the Super Bowl. Lady Gaga was a paid performer on that show. Uh-uh. And honestly, all those people complaining have never been paid a $10 million check to do something. Trust me, they would... They would do the same thing yeah well she has a lot of money so sometimes you just gotta risk it even if it was an undertone but i mean yeah I, you I, risk that money and then what happens when you don't get hired for other things see we keep thinking of yeah you know, i always hear people they're like man if i had a billion dollars i would give it to this and i would give it away to that and you don't have a billion dollars yeah. and the reason is partly because of that mentality but also because you don't have a billion dollars you don't have a billion dollars so the same way that we think the billionaire should give us money yeah when a homeless guy is sitting next to us and we don't give him a dollar, a single dollar bill, because we only have a thousand, so we don't give him a dollar, why do you think they're going to give us anything either? I mean, I get it. It's the it. same mentality. We always just think if we were in their shoes, we'd do this. Even when we're watching the game, people are like, man, he didn't catch that. No, he didn't, ca- he didn't catch the, <laughs> the football that if was I going had the ball, 100, mile, yeah, yeah, oh, I got 100, 100 miles per hour, <laughs> and, it was, and he had to run a 4-2 yeah, instead of a 4-3. I definitely get it. I think um, 
I wish she would have did. I know this is so far fetched, but I think the new national anthem of America should be Michael Jackson's Black or White. And I wish she would have just did a rendition of that. Hilarious. And I would have loved that. It don't matter if you're black or white. That would have been a good idea, I think actually. That a been, rendition of that song. Yes. That's a really good I idea. I think that would have been dope just for right now. Because they did have the little thriller dance yeah. kind of in the back at that one point. And I was watching it. I was like, that's the most coordinated random crowd of all <laughs> time. Because they started doing the light thing. I was yeah. like, man, that's not a random crowd they of people. Know. I thought it was like spectators. Yes. But that's, but, this so is interesting. The Super interesting. Bowl was exciting. It was exciting. Honestly, it's one, if, if it wasn't the Patriots winning, if this was the Raiders versus somebody, so if that was a thing, that would have been a real thing. That would have been a real thing. Yeah. So, you know. There we go. Oh, wow. So, guys, also, I, I want to talk about this because we were talking about commercials. Yes. Uh, Blue Apron. You, <gasps> Yeah, you guys have to check out Blue Apron. Oh, my goodness. My homegirl was just telling me about this. And they deliver her the food and everything. She just absolutely loves it. Yeah. And, and you know, because if you watch the Super Bowl online, they actually had, like, commercials come up. So what do they do? So they'll drop you off these wonderful meals. And, like, she doesn't even cook anymore. She doesn't do anything. And she absolutely, she's so busy. Like, she doesn't have time. And you're trying to stay fit and live a healthy lifestyle. And usually she just eats potato chips, potato chips, and potato chips. And drinks no water. Yeah, I've heard about Blue Apron. When I was was like, I really need to get on this. Oh, yeah. You definitely do. I'm a cooker. But I also would love not to spend so much time in the kitchen. I would do do it half. Like, let me get a small order and then mix it with mine. uh, You know, the food that I'm already making. Never cooked in my life. Okay, so blue apron will be perfect for you. Yeah, even look, I have a little trick, right? Uh So if like a girl's coming over, then what I'll do is I'll get whatever food she likes from wherever. Yeah, and then I'll just put it on plates and put it. Oh my god! And be like, oh, I made this. I ain't make shit. Like I've never (laughs) made shit in my my life. uh, My ex boyfriend to this day, there used I used to live across the street from the Sixth Street Cafe, and I would go over there and get the breakfast all the time. To this day, he still thinks I was making that breakfast. Hilarious. Because he's used to me cooking, but that he got so used to that one, I could never make him regular breakfast because it wouldn't taste like that. Hilarious. So I love it. That's that Bill Cosby. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Not the put it in your drink and then you have this drink. No, this is that Bill Cosby drink where yes. getting handed something. Oh, yes. look at this. I, I had I wanted information on Blue Apron. They sent it over. Yes. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the in the whole country. Yes. That's craziness. I'm so glad uh, Jeff and Steven in the back. By the way, we did want to say this. Steven, who's our producer, who engineers yes. our show, we wish every white person was like Steve. Oh, my gosh. The world story. would be the best place ever. Yeah. There's two Stevens he here. He would be the coolest uncles but I ever had. Our Steven. Our Steven. You know who he, he kind of reminds me of? Who? What's uh, uh, Channing Tatum? Yes. He's got a Channing Tatum vibe, yes. right? Just like Because he wears a little hat. Girls, before you go crazy, calm down. Not not enough for, for you. But he has a little Channing Tatum to him. Yes, he does. Uh. So we wish every white person in the world would be a, the best place ever. Blue Apron achieves this by supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standard for ingredients, and building a community of home chefs. This is, I need Blue Apron in my life. No, I'm telling you, dude, and it's this. not like, you know how some things have like the little individual packs? No, they'll have like two, three servings, four servings. Like you can really cook for your family with this. It's not just about eating it individually. Like you can really never have to cook again, ladies. <laughs> well, uh, the information I just got said Blue Apron has established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. And also seafood. I mean, this is this is amazing and can be delivered to 99% of the continental U.S. Yep. And 99.5% of food deserts. So that's a real thing. Yeah. So I'm about to I'm about to get on this Blue Apron. Oh, you're going to love it. Hold this. on. They, they even have a menu included with this. No, I need this. I need this in my life because I really I eat like garbage. And now, especially, you know, when I last night uh, after my birthday celebration and mm-hmm. show, we went out to eat and I realized I eat junk food. Yes. Every single <laughs> night of the week where it's like I'm fine now because I'm relatively young. Yeah. But my body hates me. Oh, yes, it does. My body hates me. Like, I really need to get on. Let your body fall back in love with you again with Blue Apron. Wow. Come on, Bars. Now. Bars, Nate Jackson. Come that on. was bars, bro. Come on. Bars. Reintroduce yourself to health. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to check out Blue yes. Apron. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I saw the little commercial. I'm glad you told me about it, too, because I'm, I'm honestly going to go check it out and make sure that I'm, I'm a part of this because, uh, because I, I need this. I need it in my life. Now I'm coming over to your house for dinner. If you check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with shipping. Oh, wow. The first, I'm blueapron.com slash 
Okay, I need this in my life. Tell everybody so they can have it too. I need need, need this in my life. I mean, Blue Apron. Where do they com. go? BlueApron.com. Blue, BlueApron.com. Blue dot com. Dot so com. I need that slash stand. I need this in my life slash stand. I need to use this because that's craziness. Um, story number two. Yes. Changing gears. A customer shot and killed a suspected Ugh. shoplifter at a Walmart after the man was accused of stealing diapers. Okay. So Arthur Adams, 19, was accused of shoplifting diapers by a store employee. Two guys mm -hmm. go in. When a customer intervened, a customer who had nothing to do with it, the customer, a 50-year-old man, thought Adams was reaching for a weapon when he was in his car, open fired, killing Adams and actually injuring, shooting and injuring a female passenger in the car who is okay. State has yet to file charges. Obviously, this happened Florida. in Florida. Well, obviously, it happened in Florida. If you can continue to let people get away with the same excuse over and over and over, all I have to do is start shooting people and say, I feared for my life. I'm taking a scan. I thought they were reaching for something because we are not holding these people to accountable. This is not your job. You are not at work. You are not it, over diapers. This is my thing. If somebody is stealing diapers, do you think people are stealing diapers for fun? Like, if somebody is stealing diapers, they need the damn diapers. Now, it's not okay to steal. It's not. But you're going to kill somebody for trying to provide diapers for a baby? Well, two wrongs don't make a right. Two, two, wrong, two wrongs don't make like a right. Go like this. So no, two wrongs don't make a right. Number they don't. One. But it's not. You don't work there. It's this not is not your, your job. To me, that intervention, this wasn't, this wasn't an armed crime for you to intervene. You weren't stopping a kidnapping. Arms. If this was a kidnapping, rape, murder. Yes. I would I would be all for it. Now they are using, of course, that Arthur Adams was wanted on two I don't warrants, care. and the car was stolen, so. and et cetera, et cetera. It to me, it also does not matter. No, it doesn't because that's you not for you to decide. You are not a police officer. You're not. We already have enough big enough problem with police officers, let alone now as private citizens who now think they're the police. And that's not you're your a store. cowboy, bro. You're not getting no reward for that. They're not taking nothing from you. That's not your money. That's There's not no your more business. bounty hunters like that. It, that's you, not this happening. This isn't the Wild Wild West. Not only that, the store um, employees, they're not even supposed to detain you to rest, you know, wrestle you down or fight with you. They have to let you go. So how are you going above store protocol? You know what I'm you're saying? You're going like, for what? What? And I'm not. Look, I'm not saying don't intervene in a crime. You could have took a picture. You could have took a picture of the license, anything like that. And if that happened and the guy comes to attack you, that's different. This is a person who was getting in the car, fleeing. He was trying to get away from <laughs> with the diapers he stole. With the diapers he stole. And I'm sorry, I don't care. If I see you stealing some diapers, I probably offer to help buy them. Like, that's just me. It's, they're diapers. He wasn't, uh, I get I've so I've done frustrated. that before with someone, like, I've seen a kid steal yeah. something. And I see this is going to be an issue. And I'll be like, you know what? Do you mind if I just pay for whatever it mm -hmm. is? I just want to pay for whatever it is that this person took. I've done that before. Yeah. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I just, I feel like they keep using the same excuse over and over. So when there are no, no repercussions, it's like, this is what I'm going to do. And do I feel like it was racially motivated? I mean, here's my problem. Here's my problem with this. Okay. I don't know anymore. So do I think so? Yes. But I also thought the Super Bowl was racially motivated. <laughs> so my question is, you know who I actually feel bad for? Who? The unarmed white kids that get killed in similar situations and no one cares yeah. because it's not black and white. Yeah. And this has happened. This yes. isn't, it's not this like it hasn't happened. This has happened very recently and no one cares. And I feel for those families who are like, you guys care so much about this person and this person and this person and you don't care about us because we're white. But this same exact crime happened to our child. Yeah. So I feel bad for those people because it does happen. And do I think this is racially motivated? I'm, I'm going to assume yes. I don't know if this is a white customer, but I'm going to assume it was. And I'm going to assume, yes, it was racially motivated because a 19-year-old black man and a 35-year-old black man look the same. And a 19-year-old black man reaching under his chair looks like he's reaching for a gun. And... That's something that we've been programmed to think. And yeah. it's sad. It is very sad that someone lost their life over diapers. I felt the same way when the lady shot the guy, the guy who broke into her house. Not that I blame the lady because she was protecting her property. Yeah. And I fully believe people were trying to condemn her. I was like, she has the right to protect her property. But at the same time, we should be ashamed of ourselves as a society anytime someone loses their life erroneously. Yeah. Anytime. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We need to... What is going on in the world that this even needs to happen? It's not so much that it's happening. It's like, why do people even need to steal? Not so much... 
Why do people need to be racist? Why are people so afraid? We're all afraid of each other. Yes. I'm going to shoot you before you can shoot me. I am terrified of white men walking down the street. That's real. It is. That is real. I'm dead ass serious. I, I, I don't disagree. Every time my uncles come over to the house, I'm not sure it's them. I get nervous till they get all the way to the door. And I'm like, oh, I know those white guys. But yeah. And that's a real thing. It I is. mean, it is. I really, I feel. I used to didn't even mind. Like if I got pulled over, I know I, I, oh, my, I always had my license registration and everything. I was always kind of cool about it. But now I am freaking terrified. I turn my blinker on in the freaking parking lot. Like that now I'm just programmed to be so much more terrified than I was. And knowing and then and that's why I hate when people say, well if you didn't do anything, I'm like no, I am way just terrified. If you all didn't the time. do anything happened I, several times. Yes. In fact on Sunday it was Trayvon Martin's birthday. He yes, would have been twenty two. And I believe yesterday was Sandra Bland's birthday. And here's the thing about that. The the worst part is when I heard it was Trayvon Martin's birthday, the first thing I thought was which one was that one? Is that the guy who said I can't breathe? No, that wasn't him. Was it the one who was just reaching for his ID? No. Was no, it no, hands no. up, don't shoot? Was no, it that no. guy? God, which 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 one? The was CDs, it? right? Exactly. You know, like yeah. is it? No. Oh, 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 oh. It's the, the little boy. It's the hoodie. It's the, the hoodie. hoodie. I can't. It wasn't the twelve year old, was it? It wasn't the twelve year old no, they thought no, was twenty four. No, no, that's Tamar. I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So this one was oh the hoodie the and the skittles. Yes. Oh, that's sad that we have to think like that. Which one? And it's sad that we even have to... The fact that we have to think, is this racially motivated or not? It sucks. That's an extra step, which I wish... I, I wish this was... He just wants to be a cowboy. It's an, it's an asshole who wants to be a cowboy. Yeah. But no, it, to me now, it's a KKK asshole who wanted to be a cowboy. That's the problem. That's an extra step. And it's a shame. It sucks. And it's just... Building and building and building. And unfortunately, I feel like the politics this year have added to it, and that makes it even worse. So. It does make it worse. And then let's be honest, diapers are expensive. No one wants to buy that shit. I mean, you just use it and throw it away. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo. But I mean, wow, he, he lost his life. So, you know, my condolences to his family. And I hope they prosecute him. That's, that's just, even if it's you stepped in somewhere that you didn't need to step, this was something. not your job. There needs, to, needs be to be some something. type of repercussion. You cannot for his take law into your own hands. Well, no. Not in this situation. Not in this situation. You can't. This has nothing to do with you. This is not your property. Because I would want someone to intervene if my sister is getting kidnapped. It's something like that, yes. Sure. But something that this and, is not your property. And this the has funniest part is when stuff like that happens, no one, no one steps oh, in. Oh, no one's going to. Oh, I'm watching them ride off with this little girl. Yeah. No one's going to chase the van no down. One's chased that. He stole my purse. There was actually a little black kid that chased someone down in Philadelphia on a bicycle. Yes, and got that little girl. When he saw a little white girl yep. get abducted. And that, that didn't make national news. Yep. That didn't make national news. So let's think about that. Story number three. Queen, Queen Bay is adding to her bay hive the old-fashioned way. The R&B diva is birthing more babies, this time a set of twins. The twins have been the talk of Twitter, especially with the reveal of Beyonce's baby bump in these pictures. So let's show the baby bump pictures. She's like, so this is, this is her in the original. Blue. It's blue. Blue Ivy. So let's show the baby bump. Let's show the naked picture, right? So, which are actually very artistic, beautiful pictures. I remember when Kim Kardashian did these exact same pictures. She was a whore, but Beyonce's a queen for doing it. It's just really public. This is what I mean about public opinion being... Uh, well, I think because that's how Kim initially got her start, so she's never going to come out of that spotlight, and that's not how Beyonce got hers. So I think that's what makes the, the big difference. And I think there's a lot of girls with a lot of sex tapes out there. I'm one of them, but I wore my jacket in mine because I don't See, like my arms. And that doesn't really <laughs> tell anything. Like, we think Kim Kardashian's a whore, and for all we know, she's had sex with eight people. And yeah. I know a lot, of, a lot of queens walking around that have had sex with 80 and no one's saying anything. You know? Don't look at me. Uh, I'm I'm 79. Uh, <laughs> I'm not 80 yet. <laughs> yeah, well, Nate's not here tonight, so we don't know what's going to happen. Because he the usual one to stop this, but uh, no. Hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, the twins. Okay, you're not going to like what I have to say. I don't think she gave birth to Blue Ivy. I'm sorry. And I think these are photoshopped. And that's my opinion. I don't care. I seen the interview where the stomach collapsed and they keep they tried to take it off the internet and they didn't. I think she had a surrogate and she doesn't want people to know she had a surrogate, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I definitely would have somebody have my baby so I didn't have to. So uh, they're, to me, I think they're photoshopped. So I don't think these are photoshopped. I also could possibly agree she did not have blue ivy because I never saw pictures like this, which either she wanted to prove that she had a baby this time or that 
the blue ivy talk made her do this. So mm -hmm. either way, and thirdly, it's really none of our business. Yeah. More importantly, there are two people about to be born into this world, two beautiful black children who are about to be born in this world, two beautiful black children who will be more successful than me infinitely, no matter what I yes. do in my life. They're coming in. Blue Ivy's furious, of course. Oh, yeah, she lost like, her inheritance by two. Yeah, <laughs> she just... Like, it was one thing if it was another one, but now it's two at the same time. So it's a third, 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 you know? Yeah. And they did nothing. She like, Blue Ivy feel like she put in work. She had to go through the nappy hair phase that everyone's everything. picking yes. on and everything like that, where she had to go through this. And now these kids, they're not going to have to feel the brunt that she did. Because people learn the wrath of what happens yeah. when you make fun of Blue Ivy. They saw it. Last time yeah. you saw 106 in Park, they made fun of <laughs> And Blue Ivy, and that was, was the end canceled. of that show. Which we're, they're still saying, oh, it was supposed to happen. Uh, uh. Uh, no. Ho, Ho threw up, <laughs> and everything was shut down. So I'm just playing. Beyonce had all these kids. Yo, Beyonce, <laughs> oh, we love hey, you, we Beyonce. Lo I actually, I really, I like Beyonce. We, I liked her ever since she came out. So, and I, I went to college with some people, went to high school with her. So I, I used to have a death to Beyonce campaign. That is funny. D two B, like, but it was like, I, it was just a funny thing. Like, yeah. every time a girl is like. Can you pay my bill? I'm like, man, this is uh, Beyonce. You know what's so funny about this too? I see my one of my favorite memes because you know she just did the whole lemonade series and yes. all this about leaving your husband and boy bye and I'm on to the next one. It's like Beyonce convinced y'all to leave your man when she was busy getting pregnant by her. Exactly, that's real. <laughs> Beyonce, the worst black girlfriend. Oh, you know man. those girls who are always trying to live vicariously through you leaving. Yes, you know, yeah. like go ahead, girl. Tell Usually, him, oh, boy, he bye. cursed at you. Oh, you gotta go. And then her, meanwhile, her her boyfriend beating her and yes. she's. Day. Oh, yeah, there are several people like that. Um, but, yeah, this is... I I don't know. Congratulations, though. That's cool. It looks like she enjoys being a mother, which I love. She always spend, They're always spending time. They enjoy having a family. She's worked so hard, so... Congratulations, man. Whether, you know, whether, you know, however you got them. I mean, I think that, I think that you know, green, green Leaf and Purple Kush or whatever she's going to name those kids <laughs> are going to just Oh, be what do you fine. think the names are going to be? I mean, that's the Blue, that's red, the yellow, orange? I don't I know. I don't know because I feel like it should be a, a pattern, don't but red obviously and yellow it's make not going to happen. It, they do, maybe? Hey. No, I don't think so. Green. I think blue is a primary. Oh, is yeah. Blue, blue and yellow make green. Yeah. Yeah. Blue is so, primary. So that's the thing. I don't know what they're going to name. Like, I wonder if they're going to match, be total opposite. Throw everybody or it's going to be like Serena Sean and Carter. Venus. You know, I, they yeah. could do anything. They could do anything. When, especially when you're a star, you can be as creative with the name as possible because that kid's going to be okay financially. Yeah, no don't matter. They're never going to have to apply for a job. Never. They're never going like, to have to oh, write their blue, name. Huh? Yeah, they're never going to have to be like, oh, look at this. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, Johnson coming yeah. in. Like, there's never going to be a situation where that happens. There's a, uh, uh, before I left the house, uh, this girl named LaForte. And it's L A the le the actual letter four and like T A Y and I was like can you put the letter four in a name but yes it's the actual I mean the letter the number four yeah and, and she's she's about to be homeless is she good looking <laughs> is she good looking uh, she's all right oh uh, uh, that sounds like she's busted so she she's not doing anything <laughs> with her life what does she do La Forte is she I don't know what she does uh, but see she, I, know I know she's she not a neurosurgeon tea. you know what I'm saying like. It's really a thing. I really feel like uh, what's in the name? A lot. Oh, a lot. I feel like even if my name wasn't Tehran, if it was, because, you know, being black and Persian, people are like, why did you get named Tehran? People think, because Tehran is the capital of Iran. People yeah. always assume that my dad named me Tehran. He did not. Tehran's not a name in Iran. Actually, people name their kids. This is true because I've had that name and I'm known in that community mm -hmm. and they name their kids that now. It was never a name before me. My mm. mom named me Tehran because to her it sounded black. Tehran. So she named I hear the black now that you said it. She's like, Tehran. Tehran. So, what's up? Yeah. And it was oh like, my, I never this whole time. It, it has been Prince of Tehran. Persia to me. So what, they're, what she did that because it sounded black to her, right? Yeah. So if I wasn't Tehran, if I had just a regular Persian name, I would have been a different person, I feel like. I would have really, that notoriety that came with my name and people asking me and always being, why is your name Tehran? Oh, you're this, you're that. That would have never happened. I feel like I would have been a different... Like, there, if this was Peter, it wouldn't have the same Oh, I wouldn't like it like, as a Peter. Like, hey, Peter. No. You know, there's a lot. I feel like what's in the name? A lot. It is. I love being Kanisha. And it also means church in Swahili, which I don't know if anybody cares, but it does. But yeah, I love being Kanisha. I love it. Well, actually, it doesn't mean church in just Swahili. So a Kanisha means like a, a temple in... 
Arabic and body is a temple and Farsi in every ancient like uh, religious language. Because Kenisa is like a temple, like the Jewish temple to this day is still called Kenisa, Kenisa, or Kenisha. Which is crazy because my mother is white and just said it, thought it sounded black, so that's the only reason she had and no Kenisha. idea. And Kenisha, <laughs> and it's a beautiful name. Thank it you. It is a beautiful name. Kenisha Would Lignette you ever bus. name your kid Beyonce? No. Okay, if you had to think of two crazy names for those kids. Well, oh, uh, two crazy names for those kids because I was like, when seventh grade, when we had to raise an egg, I named my kid, and I still remember her name. Her full name was Kelicia Vante Cola Gentile, and okay. that was her first name. I know okay. it was crazy. You're never going to be, I would never let, I'm never going to get you pregnant because you're never naming her child. I mean, but from seventh grade, I used to want my kid's name to be that forever. Kelicia Vante Cola Gentile, whatever bus. Okay. I know. <laughs> I hate you. So these kids? <laughs> these kids, um... Dang, I, are they boys or girls? They don't know we yet. We don't know. I, I think they're going to either be two twin boys or one boy and one girl, but I don't think it's going to be two girls. Uh, I have not a clue. Uh, Yance, Yanis, ooh, Yanis, and Car Carte. What if they did the uh, Jaden Willow thing? So it was oh. like Jayance and Jayance Bay -Z. and Bay Z. Jayonce and Bay Z. Who would be Jayonce? That's the girl. Jayonce. Jayonce is the girl. Oh, no. Jayonce is the, the boy. And the boy. Jayonce. And Bay Z. Bay Z. Bay Z. Bay Z. Come See? here, Bay Z. That's cute. That is. Jayonce and, and Bay Z. Yeah. We name their kids. If they we do that, we kids. want Hey, we want, I, want some, I want something. Uh, story number four. President Trump's counselor, Kelly Ann Conway, we've all been seeing a lot of her on the news, has taken alternative facts to a new level oh, as man. she cited. The Bowling Green Massacre on MSNBC's Hardball with Chris Matthews as a defense to the immigration executive order banning Muslims. First of all, uh, not I... all Muslims, of course, from the seven countries. The problem is the Bowling Green Massacre never happened. There's not, and I was crying because people are so petty. We live in the the most pettiest world, and I love it. Do you know people start putting up memorials and yeah, having candles Hilarious. and everything for the? I was hilarious because this is what you guys have to understand. I was gone when it happened, so when I got back, when I got on my Instagram. I was like, what happened while I was gone? Because I didn't know. People so I like, thought, R.I.P. R.I.P. Bowling yes. Green. Never remember. Oh, my goodness. But and, you know when you see it and they had all the green and all the stuff? And I was like, what happened while I was gone? What happened while I was gone? And then when I found out what happened, I was like, oh, we are so petty. This is so petty. She's absolutely ridiculous. This shows you how unfit everybody is in office right now to me. I just, this whole clan of She's the counselor clubs. to the president. Like, she is the official presidential counsel. But you know what? I, it would have been interesting because she, uh, originally she was the campaign manager. She's a Republican campaign manager, and she worked for Mark Rubio. And for Marco Rubio, and if he had won, I wonder if we would have still been as critical of her. If she would have got on and said this, then yeah, I just, I just want to know why. Like, what? At what point do you go? You know what? I'm just not fit for this job. But I mean, people take jobs all the time they're not fit for, and they eventually get into them. I think what they do is they have a good time. Like I feel like that they be partying on these little private planes, they be living it up, and they're just like the party people that come out and play politics, and then they go back in and kick it. Like, can you believe we're here? No, like that's what the, that's what I feel like is happening right now. There was a time I remember there was a vice president, uh, Michael Dukakis, couldn't couldn't spell. That was the one thing because we didn't have memes at the time. It's like yes. eighty eight or something. He misspelled a word, and everyone went crazy for it. I feel that now, I don't know if Ke Kellyanne Conway is qualified or not. I, I honestly, a lot of these things are just, they're beyond most of us. Why? Because a little piece of information is a dangerous thing. Just yeah. a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. We only know a little bit of stuff. Do I think Kellyanne Conway is the best person for the job? No, just like before the show, we were talking about Betsy DeVos, and I was like, I agree. Not the best person possibly for the job. Possible. I don't know. At this point, I feel like we've been giving people chances. I have. Yeah. And at each turn, it's an interesting surprise. Bowling Green Massacre is the newest in this interesting surprise. Like, why? You're supposed to be an extremely educated person. You're supposed to be a person who knows at least what is a real situation, yes. what is one that you made up or someone made up for you. I don't know anymore. But when you were talking about conspiracies, especially when going back to Super Bowl, you want to know the conspiracy, I think? The conspiracy is 
Now we're paying attention to all this stuff and not watching what's really happening. Yeah. And there's a lot of things really happening and going through and getting past that we're not as aware oh. of because stuff like this happens and we're all too busy putting up memes about Bowling Green massacres and candles and never, never remember, hashtag yes. never remember. And alternative facts became a catchphrase that we're not really paying attention to the real facts, which is... This just got passed, and that got passed, yeah, and uh, slavery got legalized again. Yes. We don't know what's going on. I got cotton and picking them up. Yeah, we don't, we don't know what, what's going on for real. So we're all busy. Everybody was about to revolt, and then the Super Bowl came on, and nobody protests. Yeah. Nobody, everybody stopped marching for one day. The Super Bowl came on, and it was so, such a spectacle that it's lasted two, three days, yes. and nothing's changed. I, I find that a conspiracy. I don't find the Patriots winning a conspiracy. <laughs> I find the fact that we don't... We didn't march that day, or no one cared that day. Yeah. None of the timelines said anything about present. Even if it did, people were like, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. Oh, he could have passed everything. Yeah. He could have passed anything. He they, left oh, early. They could have been like Super Bowl cruises, like, and it would have been stuff. a whole bunch of black people going back to Africa. Thought they was on a Super Bowl cruise. <laughs> like, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't read the fine print. We just check, yes, I agree, and move on. Yeah. And that's what we do in life. That yeah. is what we've been doing in life. People think they know everything because they read a meme. We don't know anything. So that's the conspiracy to me. I, I concur. Is that they are digitizing all the information so now they can change stuff. Yes. So something could be 23% this year and then next year it's 21%. That's a big, 2% is a big difference. Yeah. Not when you think of something small, but when you think of a large number of people. Yeah. So like out of 100 million, that's 2 million people, right? Yeah. That's a big difference. If, yes. if, if we said 5 million people died and then next year is 3 million and the next thing you know is 1 million, that's a big difference. Yeah, it is. Or and vice versa. So that I feel like that's what's happening to yeah. us. And we're paying attention to Bowling Green massacres, which I don't know if she... I hope she did it on... I hope she did it on purpose because it's... It, I don't know which words. Yeah. If she's competent enough to have done this on purpose to create a distraction or she's so incompetent she didn't even realize she was creating a distraction. I don't know anymore. I don't. Story number five. You might know more about this than I do. The beef between Kiki Palmer and Trey Songs. Do you know about this? I honestly don't. Has finally come to an end. So apparently the kind of singer and R&B singer had beef over Mr. Steal Your Girl's Pick Up the Phone remix video, yeah. which featured Palmer in a party scene. Palmer stated on Instagram and to Wendy Williams that she didn't want to be in the video, hid in a closet in order not to be filmed, and Trey Songz filmed her anyway. And she was upset, furious for being in this video. Yeah. And they were beefing for a good month. And I guess it's come to an end now. They've mutually They've agreed. Re, yeah, reconciled. But, but I've been in music videos. I've been in music video shoots. What are you doing there if you're not? Like, that's my, why are you dancing and kicking it and having a good time in the middle of a video shoot? And then why do, why do you hide in the closet? Take your ass home. No, no. It's, it's her right to do whatever she wants. She didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be there. And no, you can't just say go home. You actually have to say, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> bitch, bitch they, you're not new to the music. They didn't, like, you know they what didn't trick doing. you. You are Kiki Palmer. You know what's going <laughs> they didn't on. Trick You've been you. on set since you was a kid. Exactly. They didn't trick you. They tricked. Look, there's a lot of these little hoes running around videos. Yes. They tricked a lot of them to be there. A lot of these girls thought they were going to be stars off this video and slept with a lot of people who didn't even know Trey songs. Yes. Just to get close. The pool boy became, I produce him, right? Yeah. You didn't get tricked. You knew what it was. You did not, you are correct. You did not have to be there. You didn't have to be there. And at any time, you when you decide. You signed that release. Not only there. that, why are you hiding in the closet? Go. Go You don't home. even have to go home. Go in the backyard. Go to Starbucks. Do you know how big that house was? Go upstairs. <laughs> like, there's so many things that, that could have happened. And I just don't understand how you're partying and kicking it. You see all these lights. You see these, they're not filming this on iPhones. They have camera. There's production. There, you know what I'm saying? This isn't, like, a, this isn't a Snapchat. You were like, "Why yes. is I in the background and you sitting around and you caught me cheating?" No, yes. this, you know what it was. You, you knew know what, what it was. was going on. You knew what it was. But she's been in. She's been in a lot of little tick for tacks and beefs lately. The girl from a uh, lot. Uh, Bad Girls Club and things like that. It's like she's been doing a lot of outrageous stuff. And, and the gag is that little whole like she's to me has lost the Kiki Palmer effect and has become more one of these Instagram girls. Ooh, who's the girl? Azalea Banks. She's yeah. Azalea Banks. She's, she, well, she's she's not that bad, but yeah, she of is. course. But she's on the same path now. I feel like she is. She's just doing more reckless things on Instagram, and you can live your life. You can do you do whatever. But I held her to a certain standard that I just don't. She's losing that value to me. She's becoming very valuable.
valueless to me. I to be honest, that. like I, it's I just it's that. like you're doing petty arguments. You're dressing up to the, the and the gag is like just she's just doing too much for me right now. And Kiki, I'm, you're doing too much. You are. And stop singing Whitney Houston on Instagram because I mean you got a voice, but you don't have that voice. You're not Whitney. You're not Whitney. You're, you're not, not even Whitney. You're okay? not Whitney. And and you know what? Interesting. You brought up Whitney. I saw something that brought. It was such a good point. They were like, this is a picture of white privilege. And there was Amy Winehouse uh-huh. and Whitney Houston uh-huh. and white privileges. Amy Winehouse was a tormented soul. Yeah. And Whitney Houston is a crack whore. Uh, yeah, that is. That and, is. And everyone's like, they wor- they worship Amy Winehouse and his, her drug use and or Kurt Cobain or any of these people. Yeah. And then when it comes to like Whitney, a she's black a celebrity... It's like you're a crack. You're the, they just dismiss. They it. do that in everything. And, and I mean, they do that legally, uh, as we've yeah. seen with the meth versus crack epidemic. Yes, the crack epidemic was held to a much higher oh moral jail standard, time. I mean, destroying mandatory families. Jail time, yeah. m- uh, breaking constitution and amendments to get crack deal, going in houses with the Rams with no warrants yes. to stop crack. But with meth, it's like, oh, we need to send people to rehab. Oh, we need to be understanding drugs is a disease. Yeah, we need help. They weren't loved. They must have had a hard child. Let's hug. Like everything. What's yes. the punishment for having, you know, a kilo of meth? A hug. <laughs> a hug. <laughs> <laughs> What's the punishment for having a gram of crack? Shoot that nigga. Yes, like, that's pretty much what it is. Could you imagine getting pulled over and you're just a meth head? <laughs> hey, he needs a hug, guys. Stop. <laughs> he needs a hug. Stop. <laughs> guys, a I, have a, I have a, a code 496, and a, all the cops come and just yes, give the guy a hug. It's just a circle love him back to be, You can do it. <laughs> Their grandmother so it's, shows up to intervene. Because you brought up Whitney Houston. I just have to say that. It's true. Um, st- <laughs> story number six actually has to do with another legend. Uh, as, as if Oprah was not successful enough, the billion-dollar talk show host and TV network owner, philanthropist, has a new job. On top of the job, she already has, an, a, has a new job as a special contributor and correspondent for 60 Minutes, the TV show. Winfrey states that she has been a big admirer of 60 Minutes for a long time. Hmm. I mean, honestly, how much money does this bitch need? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like really, bro, that's a job you took. From Somebody else. A Raven that Samo Oprah. that no. she had that in the back. <laughs> that's Oprah, so Raven. And o- o- Oprah came and snatched that job. I mean, I I love sixty minutes. At I least do. I loved. I, I haven't watched sixty minutes in sixty, 60 years. years. Yeah. That's a, a great Jeans, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tehran. Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> So that used to be so real. Oh man, if that you be... if you talked after I jinxed you, you had to throw hands. But yeah. everybody abided by that rule. Yeah, the jinx rule. Everybody That's abided real. by that rule. Kids really do pay follow rules. Yeah. Kids oh, yes. follow rules. Freeze tag. I would break my oh. neck to make sure I did not move exactly. until somebody unfroze That's me. You know real. what I'm talking about? Oh my god. I might miss class. I'm stuck. Maybe with the, that's what the police should yell if they would it. Free tag. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stops. <laughs> but that's the thing. Uh, I don't know. Are you going to watch Oprah on 60 Minutes? You know what's crazy? I didn't watch Oprah ever. <laughs> so. I was not. Um, I like Oprah. Uh, everything that she's done. I, my favorite is in the color purple, Oprah. Um, but I, I'm just not an Oprah fan. Who I did guess. you watch? What talk show did you watch growing up? Jerry Springer. Springer? Spr- I love Jerry. I don't care. I love Jerry. Uh, I used to watch Arsenio. I watched Jenny Jones. Um, I watched Jenny oh Jones. Oh, my gosh. What are you I used to watch about? some of Jenny Jones. I love Jenny Jones. The show that I'm over on, Shade 45, is with Rude Jude, the little, the white dude that used to come and just clown the brakes off people. Yeah. That's, uh, make sure you guys tune in, Shade 45. So but, that's hilarious because yes. I definitely... She, Jenny Jones was, hey, what what was, not Jenny Jones, what is the other one? Sally Jesse Raphael? No, not her. She was a little bit chubbier. Oh, dark, uh, 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 the, I know exactly what you're talking yes. about. Not Rachel Ray. Uh, with the black she hair? She liked Rachel Ray. Yes, what, it, oh my goodness. She was just I was just thinking chubbier about her, Rachel because Ray. to me, she could get it. Yes, what I is I used her? to like her. She had one of those names, though. She yes. had a Rachel Ray type name. What was her name? I don't remember. Oh, if you man. know, please put it in the comments yes. below because we're, we're going to be like dying. We're going to search right after the yes. show. I but love, I know exactly yes. who you're talking about. I used about. to always watch her. Is Amy Adams. It's something no, like that. It's something no, like Adams. It's something like that, though. Yes. There's a name for it. Oh, I wish we could. Steven wish... in the engineering booth, if you can find out the name of this talk show host. How do you even Google that? Uh, the, the chubby talk chubby show host. Chubby talk show host with black hair. The... No, she was... And she was like a little Latina or something. Oh, man. And she and you would come downstairs. Yes. You would open the door and come down. The people would come in. 
I, can't I forget her think name. Of it. Oh my gosh! I want. I need to know right now. I, you know, sadly, you know who else I used to watch. Who? I don't know why. Mother Love. Mother Love. <laughs> Mother Love was a good one. Um, who else? There was somebody that I used to faithfully watch. And Montel. I just, Montel. Everybody loved Montel. Montel. Montel Williams. I mean, to me, I like Jenny. Jenny Jones had one of the best ones. Well, okay, so it's a talk show host, Steve, in in the booth. It's a talk show host who had a show and. You had to open, they opened the door, the guests would open the door and come downstairs, and she was a little chubby and had black hair. We cannot remember her name. Daytime. So TV. she had a daytime talk show. So maybe if you Google daytime talk show hosts, she'll come up somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, we're going to find her before yeah, today's over. She's kind of young. She has black hair. It's not Rachel Ray, but she's kind of like Rachel she, Ray. Yes, she is. Oh, when my God. When I gosh. think of her name, I'm going to be like, oh, we're going to do that. Yes. I know exactly who you're talking about because I had her in my head. But. Yeah, it just wasn't a uh, the the Oprah. Oprah fan. was too nice. I like the little. I like a little more grimy. Jenny Jones had one of my favorite episodes where the little boy was acting up. You know oh, what I'm talking about? And, and the that, sergeant comes yes. out, and the sergeant's like yelling at him, and and he's like, "Do you want to? You want me to be your dad?" And, and he's, he's like, like yeah. "Yes." And oh my God! Even the, the sergeant, sergeant broke. broke down. Even right now, even right now, I'm getting a little like. And he was like, "Why? Because I don't have a dad." Yeah. He, even oh the soldier cut yeah. it. Was like, "No, nah, I'm not doing this in front he of y'all." He had to go. He had to leave. Because he knew that little boy really needed. Even more right than now, I'm getting a little teary. I just thinking about. Oh my I God! That. Every There's some time. scenes like that where it's just like like the Fresh Prince scene where he's like. Why oh, don't he want me, man? Don't, it don't, don't matter. It's that just up. like, yo. I can watch that every day. And, and I have a dad. Like, my dad is in my life, was in my life. I Like, I grew up in a household with my I parents. No like, dad. I still get touched by those scenes. I see you're touched in your I'm, eyes I'm, right I'm, now. I am, like, thinking of that little Jenny Jones boy when he said that. I've yo, died. I was like, oh, man, that's so. That's such a real moment. Only children can be so real and pure. And it's sad that we lose that as we grow up. Yeah, we lose we that ability to think we can be anything, do anything, love each other unconditionally, yeah. just want to be good people, have fun, follow rules because we know the rules, you know, and yeah. respect them. Not rules that are made for us, but rules we created amongst ourselves. Yeah. So it's a code of ethics, pink, man. Pinky swear, kiss to death. Yes. If you pinky swear, you was not telling. There was a code of ethics that just is getting lost. And not just lost in adults, but just this oh, Hold on, generation. that one. What's her name? Yes. To the right. To the right. Ricky, Ricky Lake. Lake. Oh my yes. gosh, we're gonna die for some Ricky Lake. <laughs> the Ricky, Ricky Lake, Lake show. show was there. Lit. You go. So lit. Oh Ricky my goodness. Lake. Yes. Oh yes. And I, I, even though she was a little, she could get it. Ain't nothing wrong with a little juice, baby. No, a little, a little, like I liked her. So listen, this is uh, headlines with headliners. Yes. I am Tehran at I am Tehran all across social media. <laughs> we didn't even introduce ourselves in the beginning, but we're doing so now. By the by now, you guys should know who we are. At I am Tehran. Honestly, uh, thank you for all the birthday wishes. And follow me on yes. Instagram, Twitter, and social media, and Snapchat, and all that stuff. That could be the best birthday gift you can give me. Please follow me. And of course... Hey, it is your girl, Kanisha Bustabus. You can catch me on Shade 45, All Deaf Digital, Everybody Digital, and Sundays, which we premiered this Sunday. You can catch me on MTV2, ADD TV. My phone was blowing up. That's what's and up. And I'm in the trailer that keeps playing. And my brother watched me. He called me from jail. They do get MTV2 in jail. That's what's and up. He was in the in the little pod yelling. They only pay fifty cent a month for cable, by the way. Anyway, That's amazing. Two hundred dollars. Pay his whole cable bill for two years. So make sure you guys tune in. Follow me, Kanisha K A N I S H A. Is comedy on all my social media. We get turned up. And again, happy birthday to the Thank wonderfully you. incredible, talented, handsome, my favorite person in the world. Young T Money. Yo, you already follow me. Can I be on this show though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a brother in jail. And I don't, but I could. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram it, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.